and now we're going to go through uh, uh, the, the class. Um, each poet will do two poems, and uh, we're doing alphabetical order. The first one is Marcus Binion. Thanks, Marcus. I am waiting. I am waiting for someone to hear me. I am waiting for me to hear someone. I am waiting. I wait, I look, at you. Creepy, I know. It's my job, you know. I am just waiting. We are both waiting. You are waiting for me to do something. And I am waiting for something to do. So let's wait. And the second one is pink skies. Pink skies and green stars. Beyond this galaxy, but not far, far away. The moon is blue and the cloud is purple. And the rainbow is a rainbow, but only today. The water, it is yellow, shining, but it's not piss, I promise. Uh, the, the next reader is Jes Jessica Castillo. Castillo. <laughs> my poem's going to be a little different from what's in the book. Uh, my first poem is inspired by Jeff Ostrigen. Tick tock, tick tock. Wait, what was that? The room is getting so small, the clouds covering my thoughts. Just keep marching on, just keep marching on. People's heads up high with so much pride. Just spread your arms and legs, it's a brand new day. Just keep marching on. Splash, splash goes the rain, painting my world, inspiring green and pink. Kisses from me to you, come on. Second poem is called Lorena. A snow-crusted cover street with the signs that keeps on growing. No way to see in sight except for my shadow. Tall trees waving in the wind while the sun peeks out between them. Patches of grass barely visible, the sun shining the spotlight on me. And brown creepy stairs leading to my home. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you probably want you can snap. Um, the <clears throat> next poet is uh, Cynthia Flores. artwork, the video IFO by Catherine, Catherine Ross. Ross. Monday mornings in 3013. Newspaper, on the table. Chair, get over here. Fruit, into the bowl. Shoe, find your other pair. Coffee, into the mug. Phone, text my boss. Key, oh, wrong one, sorry. Mail, open up. Spoon, get some sugar. Coat, Come on, let's go. Lighter, into my bag. Stick, why are you here? <laughs> Clock, stop following me. Doll, stick with my daughter. Jar, out of the way. Vacuum, everything better be clean when I get home. <laughs> my next poem <clears throat> is called, What Does It Feel Like? And it was by um, an artwork in the Yukon gallery. What does it feel like? I feel like an egg in a ring. I feel like a ladder over water. I feel like a marble in a stage. I feel like a cradle alone in a room. I feel like a star in the sky. I feel like a cloud over angels. I feel like a face in a tree. I feel like a rib cage made of branches. I feel like a salt <coughs> under a tree. I feel like a flower in a valley. I feel like numbers in a ruler. I feel like a shadow over light. I feel like a shoe with dirt. I feel like a girl stuck in a frame. Okay. Um, uh, the next poet is uh, Danilo Machado. South by Deeper South. There is emptiness in the rolling hills above the wheels that keep rolling. There is emptiness in the abandoned playing cards and the abandoned novel laying on the bed. There is emptiness in the bathroom for one and its singular mirror and its dusty tile. There is emptiness between the gears of the train, between each of the tracks, each of the carts. There is emptiness between the stops shouted by the conductor, Richmond, Savannah, Jacksonville, Orlando. 
there is emptiness in what seem to be islands and what seem to be bunches of trees around bunches of water. There is emptiness in the changing, unstable view of you seen through two windows, with two gray curtains half covering the sky. <coughs> Still, there is wholeness in composition, in a stable frame and dried paint and an unmoving display about movement south, deeper south. This next one was inspired by a piece uh, that's downstairs called Slot Machine. Those fruits look like you could eat them. They're so shiny, look at them. Laugh at the punchline, the laugh tracks will tell you when. It's so funny. Try your luck, pull the handle, olives and cherries again. Two in a row, the cherries shine like plastic. You can always smell the smokers, the cigarettes leaving stains on the gaudy casino carpet. Look at the sitcom expressions, look at them, they're so funny, the jokes are always funny. Look, the audience is laughing. I swear it's not just the laugh track, golden girls and yellow lemons, look at them. An orange, a cherry, an olive, a watermelon cut in half, cut like the video clip spliced. An orange, a cherry, a cherry, a lemon. A lemon, you might have won something, look at them, they're so shiny, an olive, a cherry, a lemon, a laugh track, the camera zooms in <coughs> closer, they're all nodding, they're all acting, acting, it's so believable, organic, like the fruit on the screen, an olive, a watermelon, an orange, a lemon, a lemon, a lemon, I look at them, I've won, have I seen this before? I've seen this before, you've seen them too, olives and cherries, look at them. The actors are under lights too, they're on display, cleaned and made shiny, made to shine, so that they translate into pixels, pixels of light which flood onto glowing screens, look at them. Sitting in lonely living rooms and lonely casinos, standing in lonely galleries. It's much more depressing. I move unseen, thought of just a ghost. I'm a man, maybe even a woman. I forget. I do such mundane things, though I am not content living this lie. Uh, my second poem isn't in the book. It's a collection of quotes from the book The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chopsky. Things change and friends leave. Life doesn't stop for anybody. So this is my life, and I want you to know that I am both happy and sad, and I'm still trying to figure out how that can be. There's nothing like deep breaths after laughing that hard, nothing in the world like a sore stomach for the right reason. Downtown, lights on buildings and everything that makes you wonder. And in that moment, I swear we were infinite. I wanted to laugh, or maybe get mad, or maybe shrug at how strange everyone was, especially me. It's called Across the Street from Where I Sit. Originally, I planned this to be a walk poem. I went on an extensive walk through the back roads of my town, 45 minutes of walking in darkness on windy Connecticut roads. On this walk, I had deep thoughts and deep plans for this poem and what its contents would be. But instead, I found something more interesting and obscure when I sat down to actually write it. I do my work at the Dunkin' Donuts in my town right across from a first Niagara bank. First, a firework went off, a loud glittering in the sky firework right over the bank. And now, in uneven increments, the lights in the bank flash on and off. And instead of writing this poem, I am staring at the lights to find any rhyme, or more importantly, any reason to the shutting on and off. I have found it neither. I could have written about the lights of cars that passed, the stars or the phase of the moon, or the memories attached to the places I had passed or even the lunch I had with my mother, or the letter my uncle wrote to me and his politically incorrectness that makes you question the health of society, or the fact that today is the four-year anniversary of my own father's death, something that surely has inspired many poems and great works, death. But no, instead I choose to write about a single firework and the lights in a bank, across the street from where I sit, and write a poem about a firework. And then the second one is called Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Who cares as long as there's KFC on its way to your door? What came first, alcoholism or the strokes of genius that made your name? Who cares? Who cares as long as I can still read The Raven and the Casa Amontillado? 
Cliches deserve to be punished and burned for the torment and aggravation they have caused me, turning people into clones and drones. Girls with their daddy problems, either pole dancing or cutting themselves, and boys with their penis envy and sex addicted thoughts. True beauty is eternal. All we need is love. Time heals all wounds. Beggars can't be choosers. Don't judge a book by its cover. When it rains, it pours. So dance down your pole, keep texting, and keep masturbating to Japanese fetish porn. Keep eating your KFC, thinking it's made from real chicken. <laughs> that was from a uh, prompt we did about rant. We should all rant once in a while. And, uh, some really great poems out of that one. Uh, uh, let's see. No, not a place. All right. Oh, next poet, Michael Sochi. All right. Well, just um, one notice I want to make before I um, begin is that there is a typo in the program. The poem um, that is entitled Darkness and Stone is actually entitled The Cynical Deconstructionists. Uh, and the first poem I am reading... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the um, first poem I'm reading, uh, Flicker Life's Past, is inspired by um, the artwork CC Downstairs. Oh my god, great. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Flicker, one life. Flicker, then another. Flicker, then another. Flicker, and another. Flicker, another. Flicker. When do I stop? Flicker. Another. Flicker. When will it end? Flicker. Another. Flicker. Who are we? Flicker. Does it matter? Flicker. Let it end. Flicker. And another. Flicker. Stop it. Flicker. I don't want to know. Flicker. Another. Flicker. I can't look away. I can't stop. Flicker. Yet another. And another. And flicker. And flicker. And flicker. Flicker. <laughs> and then the next one, entitled The Cynical Deconstructionist, uh, was one that I feel really applies to um, the theme of artwork in general and how we treat it in today's society. <coughs> this is a rant poem, so please excuse my anger. Here they come, those pretentious bastards the cynical deconstructionists, to ransack, to pillage, with their hipster glasses and fuck-alls fucked up post ironic smirks, everything is fair game, reduced from beauty, to a venomously vilified, righteously reviled, retroactively repressive bullseye for a shotgun shell spray, of the bold-lettered buzzwords and false indignation, the fashionable fuckfest, the festive tomfuckery, gone full retard, in a desperate grid, <laughs> an agonizing elegy, to evacuate eminence and elevance, rendered emptiness and invalidity, impotence for the next generation, culture buried by fear and anger, a sensation of suspicion, like a pervasive pal pissed onto the persistence of popular particularity. I'm sick of it. Let fly the missiles of reconstruction, to shatter amidst the whining winsome of the bitching bunch of basket cases, who can only destroy and never create. Vindicate with valor the simple sanity of a story still free of the surreptitious sickum of sordid logic lately employed to justify the genocide of cultural milestone after milestone. I won't tolerate it anymore. Rip down the destroyers from their ivory towers, painted gray because of wicked whites. Change the target, but not the tactics. Too stupid to change the tactics. They expect exotic erotica like imperialist idiots professing to have respect but distance themselves from others. Say you can't understand, say you can't reprimand, giving only the patronizing Everyone's unique speech, given at the age of five, like they're all there and we're not. Anything old is the enemy, like some kind of monster. Patriarchy preying on our children. Racism reared in the black and white of an old movie you didn't watch, didn't understand. The culture you didn't care about. Dismissed with a dozen defamations, paid to no other culture, because they aren't acceptable targets the way our own history is. But hell, even the politically corrects are subject to scrutiny. Now fantasy must be reality to be acceptable to them. Frivolity considered the enemy. Unrealism and fantasy made something to be ashamed of. As if truth deeper than cynicism were only a fairy tale. I swear to God, it burns. Wow, okay. Uh, 
All right. Wow, it's always surprises with poets. Okay, Thomas Zebos. Hello. Uh, my first poem I'm going to read is inspired by Silence by Eric Jasmine. Three channels. There's no news today. Let's have a staring contest. I blink. I lose. Down one lost, eh? For beer demographics' sake, we should switch anchors constantly. Track day went to our network. Enjoy the news. You'll never hear the same story for long. Quack. Look at, look at the morons on Channel 2. I'm all you need. Look at my handsome face. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> from all over the world. 
I don't go there often, but when I go, I get nice coffee. I can't handle regular coffee. Uh, then I sit out on the porch, maybe have a few cigarettes and some good conversation. <laughs> Away, like they always do, and again I am alone. 